I'm in university now, I should be able to spend my money on things that should actually matter like food and clothes and entertainment like concerts or going to movies, right? I still do those. But I have a bit of an existential crisis during this pandemic. Guess it was an existential crisis and that involves buying so many books. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> Hi internet world! Um, it's back with your girl Kenesha on another video of the week. This is the video where I recommend people some of the books that I like. I'm sorry my camera died in the middle of what, what I was explaining what's going on. But also, I had to take these downstairs. As you can tell, I'm very excited for the Shadow and Bone series that I want to read it beforehand. And also because I read Six of Crows first, I just want to know what's going on with the Alina, the Darkling, and whatnot. He is it's exciting. Before I start this video, I just want to make a quick disclaimer that I love reading. I love reading to the point where I buy so many books during my childhood and I keep on reading and reading them. That's why people know me as the reader. But I just want to quickly make a disclaimer because I haven't been reading as much or where I feel like I should be. So the list that I have compiled to recommend to you guys are kind of outdated and it's mostly young adult fantasy, literature, whatnot um, because I love them and I grew up on them and I've been reading them since I could remember. These series that I have compiled are the ones that I have read, I have loved, and I have recommended to so many of my other friends to do and read. I have my Six of Crows copies on the, on the bed, on the bed, and I am going to start. So let's get on to this video. So one of the first books that I want to recommend to you guys is made by R.F. Kuang, and she wrote this trilogy called The Poppy War insert picture here. The reason why I knew of this book is because one of my really good friends from high school, hi Matilda, I'm seeing you, um, recommended it to me during my last years and I didn't get to read it until the pandemic which is perfect because the last book came out also during the pandemic during the month of my birthday which I haven't like opened up yet because I don't really want it to end yet and I'm kind of scared of knowing who will die in the end it tells the story of a young girl who had to go through these trials like all Y series um, they have a school built on the military and generals and she had to rise through the ranks and whatnot. She's also in a disadvantage because of her skin color. As she rises up to the ranks, she had to meet all these people around her who are undermining her and saying there's war. And when there's war, there's lots of conflicts and she had to rise up to the occasion. I quite love it. I love how it parallels towards a real life event but make it like fantasy and whatnot and I love how the two just intersect to each other. It would be a really great read if you are a history buff or someone who likes a lot of like Warner books because I could see it in my head going around but I think it's just too um, explicit sometimes. I understand that the book does not shy away from all those different things but I get it, I honestly do. And it's kind of horrifying that in real life, some girls do have to go through that. It just pains me sometimes to read graphic scenes, but I would recommend people to read this book because it's so awesome. The second book that I wanted to talk about is Sad Girls by Lang Leaf. Now, I never heard anyone from Book Talk talk about it, but I was really into it during the summer of 2020. And the thing is, I've read the book multiple times and I would recommend it to everybody that I know because that is how I felt at the time. I'm a very sad high school girl who can blame me, sue me, you know? Ah, the sirens! I live next to a hospital, don't sue me! And Sad Girls talks about this girl called Audrey. Audrey's in her last year of high school and she unintentionally said a rumor that went through her entire town which led the perpetrator of the said rumor to die and she got 
involved with the boyfriend of the girl who died and she deals a lot with anxiety and not knowing what to do with high school and I guess that really resonated with me. The fact that I still relate to sad girls until now speaks lots of volumes and I love Landy as an author because she puts so much poetry and like beautiful words into her writing. It just resonates with me and I wish people would hear of her more because a lot of them only knew Lan Leaf as a poetry person but they don't really know her from her books and I think it's wonderful that I'm talking about sad girls from a personal experience and I would recommend it to people to read it. It feels real to me. Although I never experienced love and honestly, I don't think I'm ready to have a boyfriend yet and we're done. We're done with that thought about that. Oh gosh, the third book that I'm going to recommend to you guys is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I just finished the book approximately last weekend and let me tell you, I could not sleep after it. Like I finished the whole first book in like three hours, then I finished the second book and I'm just waiting for the third book to come out in November and I couldn't wait for it. It tells the story of a girl named Pippa who basically opens up a cold case from her little town where she believes that the murderer of the case was innocent and she enlists the help of his brother and some of her friends to open up this case again for her final task in high school which is like crazy and she's super smart and I admire the character's drive to do it although I have to say that the writing is more like case focused but I guess that people who love like murder mystery podcasts and like murder mystery in general would love the book and I love how the story unfolds in the first book and how fast paced it was and how perfect. The pacing was perfect for the whole book and I, I really love the book and I will recommend you guys to read it. I feel like most of the books that I have been recommending to you are very like girl power centered and I understand why because I love being a girl. I love the idea of being empowered and I love the idea of talking about girls going to be more empowered and um, one of the books that I really really enjoy from like a male author perspective is obviously the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. This is not one of the books that I will recommend, you have to read it because who doesn't love Greek mythology and representation of wonderful characters with disabilities coming together to be like really smart and solving quests together. Like who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love Uncle Rick? Like I love Uncle Rick. We love Percy Jackson. Um, and you guys should read Percy Jackson. I don't mind it. I'm still looking for the fourth and fifth book original copies. And if you can find them, please comment down below. Which I'm pretty sure no one will comment because um, there we have it. I don't. The fourth book that I'm going to recommend to you slowly but surely, it's kind of romance but also really relating to my life is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Now, Rainbow Rowell had a history between Eleanor and Park and how she fetishizes the, the agent in Park. Yeah, basically she fetishizes Asian people. Aside from that, I really love Fangirl as a book because you know what? I'm a fangirl. I've been a self-certified fangirl since I was nine years old. We love those days where we you know, talk about One Direction. Fangirl is basically a, a manifestation of a college kid who is lost and she only had her books to like accompany her while she navigates through this wonderful weird life called college. So it tells the girl named Kat who essentially has to have a new roommate because her sister wanted to carve her own path and Kat had like this class for creative writing but she wasn't really doing well with it because she writes a lot of fan fiction and she turned in one of her fan fiction to the class which is like kind of stupid because no college professor would actually love being handed fan fiction now I'm just now saying that from the book is just really weird and I think Fangirl is one of those books where you have like a soft spot in your heart 
and I'm recommending it to you guys to feed it. If you're a fangirl and you want to know how to be a normal fangirl, read fangirl. She gets the boy in the end. Another book that I'm recommending to you, this is the fifth one in this um, video. I'm gonna recommend you IQ84 by Haruki Murakami. Now, <laughs> I read the story how I read this book is in a weird place. Essentially, a trip to be read, and uh, I shouldn't have started with IQ84 when I wanted to tackle Murakami, but I did. It's a thousand pages, and I finished it as well. It's basically about two people from the same universe and they went into this place like a rabbit hole to a different universe with little people and stuff like that it was very it was a trip to be quite honest but i feel like a lot of people should read iq84 because it's like a parallel of 1984 it's also set in 1984 which is still also kind of weird because it feels like george orwell's 1984 um, Compensated towards IQ84 of Murakami's, but it's different. It's definitely different. Although I haven't read 1984 by George Orwell yet, I I only read clips. So anyway, in IQ84, these two people went to this different universe, and they have to learn this different laws. It's a pretty good read. I have to say to it for myself, but it's still um, a lot. You know, it's a, a lot for a teenage girl to understand. But you should read because it's a trip and they have lots of good quotes from it um, a lot of existential crisis if you like some of those uh, i would have to say iq84 is a must read people please read iq84 one of the other recent reads that i love from my childhood i found this book from my school library um seven years ago wow seventh grade is a long time ago cross my heart hope to spy bye bye ali carter it's the second book on the Gala Girl Girl series and the reason why I'm not I'm, I mean I'm not abandoning the first book but I prefer the second one to start with because that's where all like the juicy details for the whole series start and I love it <laughs> I love how boys spy school and there's a girl spy school and they have to meet each other and it, it made me think of like my days during like um, middle school where uh, I realized there's another boys junior high and they usually come to our school and they're just two different things but that, that's essentially what's going on in the book and it parallels to my real life trippy it's about this spy girl called Cami. she's basically a chameleon she's basically invisible but she's safe and well known in her school she met this guy who is also like her from this boy school and they have to work together and go past their differences to pass their classes <laughs> yeah that's the book and i really love it and i that's my that's the best book in my opinion of the whole series and that doesn't count the finale the finale so good and it should be a movie or a tv show and i love it the next book that i am going to recommend to you guys is that excited everything by morgan Matson. i think i talked about this book too when i was talking about um the poppy war trilogy and i essentially told people to read it because there are dogs in it and it's such a fluffy romance it's like one of the best romance books that i have read for like young adults basically an overachiever meets an otter and they have to walk dogs together who doesn't love that who doesn't love that book i love it i love it okay i'm just that's, that's all i'm gonna say for that book and it's fine another little mention is to sylvia platt for the bell jar um that book kind of creeped me out not gonna lie but um it's a good read it parallels a lot to my life where I want to be a journalist when I was younger and that never panned out. Bell Jar is a book that people should read. It talks a lot about women and women who are uncomfortable in many aspects of life where um, men are always around them. The book is also set where women started to have more independence over themselves and they have lots of talks about mental illness and how it well, it could be great if it could be treated and sometimes it makes you crazy and sometimes it doesn't 
and I think it's such a great read, although it does make me feel depressed. Another book that I loved is Starflight by Melissa Landers. I feel like it's one of those underrated books that a lot of people have probably seen, but they haven't like read it. Probably because it's cliche sci-fi romance, but it has enemies to lovers and it's set in space and an unlikely team of people in order to complete the task that they are assigned to. It's really sweet. I'm not really sure what I'm talking about. I haven't read the book in a long time, but it's one of the dearest enemies to lovers books that a lot of people should have read. It's also a very easy read and I think if you like romance and you like enemies to lovers trope, um, set in space as well. I think you'll love it. And I think that's about it for my book recommendations. There's a lot of more where it came from. I think I really like the fact that I am trusted enough to make a book recommendations video. Although I have a fear that I'm talking a lot about how these books make me feel instead of like how how the plot is and how it should go. If you watch this video, please like it down below. Subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about me, where I talk about my opinions and stuff. If you want more content from me, please subscribe, please like this video, and support me the way you can. And I will be glad to do it. Anyway, um, see you in my next video, Internet World. Yeah, bye!